Hi, welcome to this video. And today I'm going to explain about what is NSF. I'm not going to explain the basic things, only I'm going to explain about some of the very important key factors about LSF. The main thing as administrator to use the LSF, what are the things they need to know in the these are the important components we need to know. The first thing is LSF architecture and LSF daemon and LSF file and directory structure, then LSF command and how the LSF job cycle uh, is happening and the final one is LSF job scheduling policy. It is one, two, three, four, five, six totally. If you are good in these six topics, I hope can work in this architecture and you can do all the stuff remaining everything if you want to uh, work towards anything specific and you need to look into the specific thing. but to overall the things if you are good in this six topics you can easily work on this first thing is this is the LSF architecture and this LSF architecture it's like a software so we need to know what are the services are running on this servers and client and this is uh, if you are what are the things i'm explaining if you're good in distributed computing you can easily uh, craft these things so before that if you are not good in distributed computing please refer some document how the distributing job settings work now i'm just focusing on the uh, top layer about that. Uh, this in LSF architecture uh, in the server and client it will run this LSF demons. This demons from server side it will run the six service like yamlim pim dis s batch yam patch s batch and client it will run on lim pim dis and s batch. So in the server side it will be run on six and client side it will be run on four servers and in this which all services are running on client the same service will run on the server but additionally the extra two services will be run that is i have make underline and italic character these are the m patch and s patch so these are the service you have to remember and make sure is it running properly the services are the first line lim that is load information and pim process information manager and rdes and the final one is s -Pass. The same service will run on the server. Extra, it will be run on m patch and s -Pass. The next slide, I'm going to explain how this, uh, what is the service responsibility and how it will be interact with the other service. These are the things I'm going to explain on the next slide. This is the next slide. And the first service lim lim is mean first thing is better you need to know what is the abbreviation that will easy to help to remember uh, the technical things about their functionality so lim is a load information manager that load information manager it will be run on each individual host on the distributed system so it will collect all the load which are things running on the specific hosts uh, like a RAM, CPU, everything it will be taken this value and once it gathered this information it will be uh, sent to the master link this information. This information we can see using this LS info and uh, sorry LS load and LS hostess. Using this information the LIM what are the information is collecting we can get it more. And the same lim in the master node it will be act as a yum lim this is a master lim this yum lim it will gather all the information which is collecting from each individual post and uh, it will it will gather and it will send this information to the yum patch and what is yum patch yum patch is a master batch cellular demon i know what is mean by batch batch mean uh, without user interaction it will run the job on the non-interactive mode that is the batch mean so here master batch demon mean whenever a user submit the job from the client system it will accept all the jobs and hold it in on the 
master batch daemon once it's taken the job as an input then it will check the load load information just in this mind it will just gather the load uh, job in what are the job needs to be submit from the client system and once it get this it will interact with the yes batch uh, this this is the in doing way it will do and yes batch it will be like a uh, it is slave batch you can consider the slave batch so master mean master batch so it will get all the input what are the accept the job execution request from the m patch will take a input from the m patch and that is the first functionality the next functionality it will be monitor the uh, job process and uh, and uh, it will report the job status what is the current running status which is running by this information it will take it will run on the client node and it will take this job information value and send to the master class this it will do and this m schedule what it will do this functionality it will evaluate the job evaluate the job in and the scheduling policy how much resource is requested just like it will evaluate it is value the job uh, the job how much important it is or it is not important it will va value the job once it is evaluate the job it will check the available resource depends on this available resource and value the job it will take a decision and once it's take a decision whether job this job needs to be run or needs to go present this information into the master batch team and this is the next two process is a PIM. PIM is a process information manager this process information manager it's slightly this functionality differ from the load information manager the load information manager it will connect the information how much cpu ram is used but the process information manager it will gather the information about how that job is utilized with the requested cpu and ram for example out of 20 cpu how many cpus are used out of 100 cpu ram how many Ramps are used. This information it will gather and it will uh, send. And if this threshold is limited and it will uh, used to uh, limit the resource utilization using PIM. And RES mean uh, it's a remote execution request. It will create the job execution environment and in on the client. These are the things. These are the clear diamond functionality of what things and this next thing is uh, the third slide is going I am telling about, about what are the important files and directory you need to remember for this I am just going forward to the uh, slide 2 and slide 2 if you refer on the right hand side here I have mentioned configuration and log file location these are the environment variable it will be made in. For example, if any application you need to remember where is the configuration file, where is the log file, where is the binary file, what is the lib directory. These are the thing and also here in LSF what is the top directory. These are the five things you need to remember. Configuration, log, binary and lib. And these are the information it is stored on the environment variable in this configuration. Using this and you can do all the a installation and configuration stuff. This in environment variable it will be stored on the specific configuration file. That configuration file I am going to explore it now. This configuration file is uh, install.config, lsf.conf, lsf.parameter, uh, lsf.q, and lsp.resource. These are the things. On administrator point to installation and configuration, you need to know install.config and lsf.config. On job scheduling port to con handling queue and resource and parameter, you need to know these files. There is a lot of files will be there, but uh, basic part if you know good about how this is working, it is good to know about this. So in this configuration file, they have added the flags and environment variable, the specific options. Uh, we can run this utilize this job in a better way and next slide is about the commands in this command uh, the LSF command mostly I can do 
get a under, good understanding I thought divided into the two part the comments some of the comments start with the L and some other comments start with the P the comments start with P it's mostly uh, coordinating and uh, working with the functionality it is related to the batch demands batch related process related to like uh, uh, batch related stuff batch related stuff mean that to run the job on interactive mode and get the job details and kind of things and uh, related to LSF it is working related to the distributed part like installing and how the LSF is working that kind of part it is working so in this two category it's I divided since it's a batch job number of batch command is higher compared to the LS command so you need to remember this thing so that you can easily remember all the commands uh, in this uh, LSF command because it's if you are trying to highlight all the command you can't remember in a single video you need to spend a lot of time so here in the LS command there are six command will be there uh, first thing is uh, uh, we need to install and we need to start the service and we need to control the operation and we need to see the load for that if you look into this case for installation you can check lsf install and start lsf start up stop and resume then next to control lsf admin admin and to see the all the host information you can then lsf host ls info ls load these are the information you can get it and yeah this is the way we can control all the lsf activity on a distributed mode and I hope you are clear so don't make it confused make it very simple this is uh, LSF for installation and start up and stop service and see the information uh, mostly all the uh, batch scheduling diamond we need to look this three category while looking this this three category you can easily remember this comments LSF install LSF start up stop and restart and LS admin and ls load ls hostess and uh, ls info and the batch uh, settling process uh, it is related to controlling the job on the client node and uh, get the job uh, history and submitting the job and uh, Check the job status it's related to mostly related to the job related stuffs like configuring and queue these are the information we need to use with the p and don't confuse with the ls admin and p admin ls admin is used to control the operation related to human risk and p admin it's used to control the operation related to s batch m batch and q so uh, to get the uh, uh, host related we can a b hostess b limit p para and user p uses biggest p job and p sub and p status mainly you need to know about the two important command is p sub to submit the job and check up for the job details p sub p jobs and b history these are very very three important commands you need to know remaining every command is related to administration stuff from user level you need to know p sub p jobs and b history on administrator level you need to know pq and p param and p limit and p admin and to create the job start and uh, checkpoint and stop you need to use uh, this uh, uh, this commands p start p restart and p resume and p stop these are the things you need to know i am going to next slide and the next thing is you need to know about and next slide i am going to refer about how the job life cycle is working on this ls when uh, user submit the job how this job is running into the batch diamond and it is running on the computer node and it is going getting back the return this is happening on the six steps first thing is user is submitting the job the next is it is scheduling the job and third is dispatching the job then fourth one is running the job and fifth one is returning the output the final one is send the mail to the job these are step steps happen so when user is submitting the job on piece of then the scheduling the job operation is happening between uh, yum patch and yum scheduler there is a communication will happen then the dispatching 
job. Once the YAMP schedule it decide and to dispatch the job, it will send the decision to the master batch diamond and they are dispatching the master batch diamond, it dispatch the job into the compute node. Then dispatch it will take the control of the system and it will receive the job and it will run into the audience remote execution in normal. In fifth job, once the job is finished, it will send this information from S batch to the master batch, and finally the master batch it will send the mail. This is the simple way the job lives. And the next thing is how the job scheduling algorithm. This is like a five things. First one is simple, first come first serve. Which job is submitted first, it will run. The second one is SLA scheduling. I know you about what is SLA. SLA is service level agreement. So if there is something specific project which should be done on a specific time with a high uh, SLA, then that is the way it will work. And then next one is fair share scheduling. You need to know better to remember things. You need to know what is fair share. The system resource is properly divided to all the users and group rather than a single resource it utilized by the all the users. So that is the way this uh, properly share the resource to all the department so that everybody can use the specific or not resource. Then the fourth one is preemption. Preemption means priority based. I have explained this in the bottom. If you see here in the bottom you can come to know uh, it is a bit uh, confused but i let let me try to explain a symbol preemption means first remember the priority so if the higher priority is job is waiting and in the same time if the lower priority job is running in that time what it will do it will suspend the lower priority job and it will run the higher priority job instead this is the way it will be accomplished and this is the preemption and the next one is backfill backfill means uh, for example uh, it's if this is also uh, you need to uh, spend some little more time here to understand a bit difficult uh, I, I don't know which is the practical example I can give uh, but it's like a um, to explain I have want to ex some ex explain some small things in a, within a minute uh, I hope you know about uh, this technique. Uh, it will give the example for how to manage the timing better. For example, if you want to fill up in the bottle the maximum capacity of the uh, things, first you will fill up with the maximum big stones. First you will fill up. Once you fill up the stones, uh, if you want to fill up the remaining stuff like a small items like a sand, uh, then you can easily put into that. So first you need to put a stone, stone, then second you need to put the stand. This is how you can, you can utilize this what to utilize food space. Or else you, first if you fill the sand, then next if you put the stone, then uh, it won't utilize properly. The same technique it will be applied to the backfill. First uh, all the big job, the so job slot will be uh, submitted with the job limit with the LSO. In the meantime, when in the specific job limit, if there is a possibility we can run the small job without affecting the reserved job, we can run. This is the way we will work. And thanks for watching and if you want to know anything specific, please refer the document. If you still have doubt, please uh, raise your question. Thank you. Thanks for watching.